Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and thumbnail for this video is not a clickbait, but before I will move to us humans, let me, as a plant and animal breeder, explain certain terminology. So here on this picture you see parent 1, parent 2, and the progeny we call F1 hybrid, and as you see it is much bigger than both of the parents which are inbred lines, and this is hybrid line between these two parents. As you see, not only green part of the plant is different, but also corn is also very different. This is what we call hybrid vigor. And parents, which here looks similar, actually, as you see, if we take a look at the corn, we see that they are different. So they are phenotypically different and they are genotypically different. What does it mean to be inbred? Let's take one locus and for example parent one will be fixed in that locus. What does it mean? That means that both alleles would be the same. Say capital A, capital A and parent two also in the same locus may have also two of the same alleles but these alleles are going to be small a small a, also fixed in bread line. But their progeny in the same locus for the same gene from one parent would inherit dominant allele A and from the other parent would inherit recessive allele A. And would be heterozygous and you also have to understand that parent 1 not necessarily have to be for the gene B also to be capital uh, B capital B and parent 2 small b small b they have to be just fixed. For example, parent 2 can be capital B, capital B, and parent 1 can be small b, small b, but for the gene B, the progeny would be capital B and small b. Again, would be heterozygous, this is also what we call heterosis. But what if both parents, for example, for the gene C, would have both small c, small c. This parent and this parent also would be fixed, with small c, small c, then the progeny also going to inherit only small c allele from each parent and also would be fixed in that locus, but on the average the progeny F1 hybrid would have much more loci which are going to be hybrid or heterozygous. In my previous video where I explained the same conceptual idea, I was using dogs instead of uh, corn. And if you, for example, take two inbred line of dogs and we cross them, we also would find that the progeny of such a cross would live longer than any inbred line of the parents. Some of you may say, but we are not dogs, we don't have breeds or anything, but this is not true. Take a look at these faces. Would you be able to spot Indian here? And I'm sure that 100% of you would say that this is going to be Indian. Would you be able to tell Tibetan? Maybe 99% of you would choose this person over this person who is look more like Chinese because he is Taiwanese and they are Chinese. So races and ethnicities are not social construct. But for example, if you take a look at Russians and Ukrainians, you wouldn't be able to separate them in two distinct uh, groups. Even I wouldn't be able to do it, those I would be able to spot on the street people who belong to my ethnicity, like one person out of 10,000 people. But between Ukrainians and Russians there is no genetic difference. So even if someone would offer me one million dollars, I wouldn't be able to separate 20 people into 10 Russians and 10 Ukrainians. There is no way to do it. So from this point of view, Ukrainians represent a social construct but not distinct genetic and phenotypic group. You probably can notice here that Serbians, Ukrainians and Russians look more similar to each other and this is true because we can put them even in broader category of the Slavic nations. We also can easily categorize people into broader category of the Europeans. So this face, this face here, 
this face here and this face here. We also can easily say who is mongoloid here and this is going to be this face here, this face here and this face here. No problem to say who is negroid here, this face here. We also have here two ethnicities which are mixed ethnicities. So here is the face of the typical person from the South India and in the North India uh, people look slightly different on the average. Those you can find of course people who have lighter skin in the South and people who has more pigment in their skin on the North but on the average people who live uh, on the South slightly different from those people who live on the North. For example you cannot tell the difference between people who live on the north of Russia or on the south, on the east or on the west. But in India you can tell the difference because Indians has diverse mixed genetic background, which are a result of the multiple waves of migration to India. And there is also a lot of mixture with different ethnicities that has common border with India. And lastly, Peruvians represent local American indigenous population with some admixture of Spaniards' blood. Because we can recognize all these faces and can categorize them, we can say that every nation is inbred and different from the rest nations. From biological point of view, we all humans just like different breeds of dogs, even if it offends you, this is true. But some of you may say how Indians can be inbred. But actually Indians are very inbred nation, much more inbred than any of the rest. Those, there are so many Indians, it is number one uh, by population now country. The population surpassed China this year. But actually people for at least last couple thousand of years were separated in different groups, which are caste system, but also were separated according to their religion, according to their language and place of birth. Because even like 50, 100 years ago, even to go somewhere like 50 kilometers from you, it was a huge trip. So people usually married within 10 kilometers radius where they have been born and more than that India goes right after Pakistan by number of uh, consanguineous marriages. So many many people there marry to their close relative like first cousin. So you have to understand that India as a country is highly genetically diverse country but if we'll start looking at individuals we will find that Many individuals actually belong to certain small groups and actually highly inbred. But this also gives distant look to Indians, no matter South Indians, North Indians, they have distant look. But again, this depends on the state. Some of the Indians may have very Asian look and some of them may look even very European. So now you see that ethnicity or Race is not a social construct. And now we came to the main thought. But what about people who would be intermediate? For example, between Spaniards and Mongolians. How we are going to categorize them? In this case, they are going to be hybrids. We also can say that they are going to be biracial. Or if a person has multi-ethnic background, we say that he has multi-ethnic background and he is hybrid. And now at last we came to this study of the mixed ethnicity face shape and attractiveness in humans. And here is an abstract of this scientific work. You can read. But basically what does it say? It says that there was one group of people to whom uh, hundreds of different photos were offered to choose regardless of the race, to choose people who are more attractive. And as a result, 
people who were choosing most attractive people themselves were Europeans and Africans. And this group of scientists have found that mixed ethnicity face shapes were more attractive than enhanced single ethnicity face shape across both populations. So statistically, both Europeans and Africans perceived people of the mixed background as more attractive than even the oven ethnicity. These results are consistent with evolutionary theories suggesting individuals should prefer heterozygosity in parents because facial cues to mixed ethnicity are likely to indicate diverse genes compared to cues that indicate a face belongs to a single particular culture or population. So as you see, my thumbnail was not a clickbait. We as humans subconsciously prefer hybrids or genetically diverse people over inbred people. Or in other words, pure breed or pure ethnicity or pure race. From my previous videos, you now know that people of the mixed genetic background live longer. Now you see that even people who belong to so-called pure ethnicities perceive people of the mixed genetic background as more attractive. I just imagine how Hitler is turning around in his grave. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.